Welcome to ACTV. I'm Alex Curry. We have a very special guest with us today, all the way in South Korea, former MLB and Angels catcher Hank Conger, who's currently coaching in the KBO right now. Hank, how the heck are you, buddy? Good, good. It's been a long time. It's been a really long time. I know, good old Angel days. Right? Um. I, how did you end up in Korea? Please just like let me know. Because I remember we were chatting, I think the day you were on the plane about to fly out there in January. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's right. So yeah. I had a couple of connections. And then uh, Min, our new GM, uh, he worked in the Cubs organization. He took over as the GM here in Lotte. So uh, he contacted me and reached out and, uh, you know, asked me about this job coaching out here. And yeah. here I am. That's nuts. Was coaching always what you wanted to do? Is it kind of? Uh, honestly, not really. You know, while I was playing, I was kind of like, yeah. you know, I don't know if I want to coach. And then I think for me, once I was done playing to give yeah. myself kind of a mental break from baseball mm -hmm. and, you know, get away and just kind of do personal stuff on my own and get away a yeah. little bit, it kind of brought that fire. And then um, my high school coach, Benji Madur, he uh, reached out to me. He was like, hey, you know, last, and this was like last year. Yeah. And he was like, this is, you know, one of the very first springs that I'm actually going to see you. Like, do you mind helping out our catchers and come to the field? So I, I said, yeah. And then, yeah. you know, the more and more I went to the field and the more I enjoyed it. And so that kind of sparked it a little bit. Oh, my God. And can you speak Korean? I mean, I, you have to, right? A little bit. Yeah, I'm getting there. My goal is to be, like, fluent. Fluent at the end of the season. Where are you, but, at? Um, Where are you at now? If you, like, I'm like half one to half. ten. I'm half and half. Like 50? Uh, 50-50? I, I would say 50, I would say 50 because I could understand almost like everything that people say to me. Like as far okay. as like hearing and understanding the language, because I had like a different dynamic with my mom when I was younger, because she would always speak Korean to me. Okay, so your parents was, spoke Korean. Yeah, and I would always kind of speak English back to them. So I yeah. kind of wish, you know, that was my only thing. I was like, I wish I would have made an effort to like practice it when I was younger. Well, now you do. Looking yeah, back. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I mean, back back in the day, like, growing up in Huntington, I'm like, oh, am I ever going to really need this? You know, it's just Little did you know. Things. Now you're living I in, know. now you're living in Korea. How are <laughs> mom and dad? Do you remember when we came to your house and your mom pulled out all your baby book photos? Oh, and the baby, yeah. And the baby Hank was like basketball the, photo. Was, right? Baby Howie, Hank was like Howie my Disney. favorite. <laughs> 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 By far my favorite. Okay, now let's get to it because most of us here in the States, we're still stuck inside. Everybody mm -hmm. is just craving sports. Your season just kicked off. So paint the picture for us. What's it like playing right now during a global pandemic? I mean, for a lot of these guys, I think a lot of the foreign players mm -hmm. and the foreign coaches here, they kind of understand the severity of everything that's kind of going on back home. Yeah. Um, and the Korean ballplayers, they know too. I mean, they, they hear the stories about what's going on back in the states and they obviously endured you know some of their things as far as like lockdowns and everything early in i would say like january february okay so for us to actually get the season going and to play even though it's not in front of fans yeah. i think is just kind of a relief to a lot of people here in korea and just kind of like all right we got baseball season going let's just kind of react to whatever is happening right now because obviously there's so many different circumstances and different situations that are being like implemented um you know as far as this kbo league and i mean you're kind of like the blueprint for what's going to happen you're the first league to really kick start and get going did you have a spring training did you have any sort of camp or did you guys just go right into games so i think that's why i feel like a lot of these guys are are able to transition easier into the season when we got started yeah. We started in, I'd say, February 1st, and we were out in Adelaide, Australia, which was actually oh. a great, you know, it was great out there. And yeah. so we started the whole scrimmaging. And at that time in Adelaide, nothing was really going on. You know, the whole outbreak was happening. But okay. as far as Adelaide, it was pretty safe. And we were pretty much, so we were literally just been scrimmaging since middle of February. So a lot of these guys were like really antsy to just say, let's just play the season. Like, let's get it going. Let's try to stay safe, but, like, let's play some real games. So you guys have been practicing together, scrimmaging. Nonstop. Really? So you never were in quarantine, ever? No. no. Really? Okay. Yeah. So Has there we, been um, any cases? So we were going to do um, – oh, yeah. Players I mean, who have tested was, positive? Oh, no, no, no. No. 
Okay. For no players. Um, you know, obviously we're hoping, you know, everyone, everybody stays safe because I think they they said something about like shutting some stuff down if a player or a coach kind of gets test positive for it. Yeah. But um, I think that going forward for us, I think a lot of guys are just used to saying, look, we, we understand there might not be fans. There may be fans like later in the yeah. season, but everyone's main concern is like trying to stay safe, make sure nobody just, you know, gets the virus. So what's that look like? Do you guys get tested every morning? Is everyone kind of living in a similar area? Are they with their families? Are they not with their families? So that's the thing right now. Like everyone's pretty much living a normal life out here in Korea. Really? And okay. I was pretty surprised about that. I mean, when I first came out here, everyone, you know, was trying to stay safe. And then they were like, oh, that's fine. You know, if you need to go eat, just like, just stay away from crowded areas. And there was kind of like a soft lockdown, I guess, towards the end. Okay. Which I don't, I don't know how you really describe that. But, um, you know, you go on the street, I mean, people are working, people are eating, and, you know, people are going to the malls. Like, to some extent, you look at both sides, like, yeah, people are living normally. They did a really good job early on as far as, yeah. like, really shut down everything and making sure people stay safe. Um, yeah. And at the same time, you're like, ah. Like, for me, you know, I get uncomfortable if you're in a big crowd. You're just like, eh. I'll, What's, I'll like, a big crowd? Else. Like, how, how big a crowds are there? Like, at a crowded restaurant? Or people You'd be are sitting down in restaurants right now oh, and, like, yeah. gathering at parks and stuff? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. I mean, you, if, you, if you, honestly, if you came out here right now, well, I told people at first, I was like, wow, there's a lot of people just roaming around. And, and um, my translator, I hang out with him all the time. And yeah. he's, uh, he's like, oh, this is nothing. This is nothing compared to what it normally is here. So I was like shocked. But if you literally came out here and you came yeah. out to like one of the busy streets or the busy areas, like the shopping areas out here, you would yeah. have thought that like nothing happened. So it's kind of just back to normal life with masks, people wearing masks. Oh yeah. Everyone's wearing okay. masks. Um, so that's kind of I remember normal. my first day I tried to open up a bank account here yeah, with a, along with a couple of other coaches. Yeah. I forgot my mask because I remember oh, they told me. So no, I, no. I walked, <laughs> I walked into the, yeah, I walked <laughs> into the bank and sure enough they're like like everyone's like staring at me weird and yeah. they eventually come up to like my translator and they're like hey you know we can't we can't have him in here unless you he yeah he's gotta to, like, go walk all the way back to the field wow. yeah but we get temperature checks i mean daily like no matter okay, what so that's, we that's kind into, of the the daily check is like temperature yeah. that's how they kind of manage yeah. it all yeah, they got, okay. like, the infrared, um, you know, yeah. the cameras and stuff. So everybody walking in. So they're making sure. Okay. What's it like playing with no fans? Um, it was a little weird at first. Yeah. Yeah. But I think the KBO, they do a really good job as far as, like, pumping up fans. And that was okay. the one thing I was really excited for when I first got over here is everyone's like, yeah. the atmosphere here for baseball is crazy. And so they're used to playing like these chant songs while like they're playing okay. back in the States, you know, if your pitcher's pitching or hitters, like, hit, you know, they shut yeah. down the music Nothing. and everything's kind of like, yeah. yeah, they're, they're playing chant songs. Like there's cheerleaders dancing and there's like background okay. noise everywhere. And I saw the so, big like um, zoom camera that they had or the screens with like a bunch of fans yeah. tuning in on that. So that was, that yeah, was so cool. That was, the, that was for KT. Cause obviously, you know, they're the telecom company. So they were able yeah. to kind of install all that at their field. Um, which I thought was really cool and unique. That's so I, cool. I thought that was, some, yeah. So I was actually hoping we'd bring it over to our stadium. But, um, you know, at this point, everyone's just kind of happy to play and, and they do a good job as far as kind of pumping, you know, music and stuff yeah. like that in between while guys are hitting. So it, it, it's fine. Well, as like a broadcaster, are the broadcasters able to be in the same areas as you? Like, are reporters coming up for like interviews, post game interviews? Are they around you guys? What's that so look like? At, at, the, at first, I was kind of confused about that because, yeah. you know, back in the States, you get to go on the field, you get to do the pregame, the mm -hmm. pregame, postgame shows and everything. Yeah. And, um, no, here, they stay up in the stands. Uh, if they want to get, like, a certain type of player or they get the manager for the daily meeting, the manager kind of goes up there. He gives himself about, like, a good six feet of, like, distance. Okay. And, um, you know, they interview in a group, and that's about it. But there's really nobody uh, – on the field okay do you guys yeah. social distance player wise coach wise uh, it's tough it's tough i mean when they first proposed the rule in arizona yeah. I, I know i heard about all the rules people sitting up in the stands and i'm just yeah like, like that's not gonna work and so that that's the interesting part here i mean the owners and players the conversation started yesterday shortened season 
split the revenue 50 50 so it mm -hmm. arizona is going to allow live sports which is kind of looking like the best case scenario but with the family situation and as you mentioned is the social distancing actually going to work out there's so many yeah. things up in the air do you think it can work uh, you're in it right now so do you think it can work here i think the only reason why i thought it could truly work here in the kbo in, in korea is because I, I think they did such a good job as far as like containing it when everything early on broke out early on yeah. yeah and i still do think that there's hope but at the same time specifically for baseball time, time's running out yeah trying to get to that point here where it's like you know they got to kind of start getting something going for us it was easy transition because if you think about it spring training was ready to go i know you so, were training i didn't yeah, realize so that you guys have been playing while we were all in lockdown so we were in lockdown and you were coaching and you guys oh, were yeah. practicing and everything. That's why I was kind of in my own la la land up until, yeah. you know, I talked to my wife or my family and, and they're like, man, we can't, you know, everything's locked down here in Cali, everything. So oh, it's crazy. And so it's like, okay, well, if you get started, like how long is it going to take? How long is it going to take for your starting pitchers there back has home to and be everyone to get going? There spring training in camp. Yeah, like what are you going to do with the minor league system? What are you going to do with staff? Because, you know, I think in the States, looking at it, the personnel and the staff for each organization, there's a lot more. Oh, yeah. There. A lot more. So, oh, yeah. you know, what are you going to do with that? So uh, there's, there's a lot of questions. Um, you know, I hope they do. I hope they do get something off and, yeah. you know, rolling. But um, at the same time, the severity of this is pretty – It's uh, it, it, it's wild. It's wild. I, I definitely hear stories from my friends and family back home. So oh, I know it's, it's not. Today was a big day because today the beach is open just for workouts. Mm -hmm. So that was a really big deal. The beaches were closed, strands were closed, but now today everyone could kind of go out and work out on the beach, put their toes in the water and the sand. So oh, nice. that was really cool. That's big for mental health, I think. That was kind of the oh, most yeah. important thing. It's just like get outside, get some fresh air, keep your distance. But okay. I want to point out your coaching photo because this thing was absolutely hilarious. Why did you decide to do that? And what, what was the inspiration behind this? Um, you know what? I just been watching too many K dramas out here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Give us the look. What's a, well, is it like a signature? Like, it's just, you know, like I would say, I would say, you know, the, you know, the everyone, did the kind of the victory the v victory okay. uh, pose all the time so this one is obviously you know the heart you know you, you do the heart like the cute little heart finger. no i didn't know that that's what that you is i have no idea yeah. no i you know, thought it was so, like look at that you gotta Aww. do like the dramatic you gotta do the dramatic so that's what it was like, you were doing like a little heart yeah so that's like the big thing for people like and you know the big, more so i think the girls kind of do the photo when they're posing for their pictures and stuff but um uh, so I oh just, my gosh. I, I was watching the cage. Um, if you're ever into Korean dramas, Crash Landing on You, Netflix, okay. and and uh, Ite One Class. I think you'll okay. really get a kick out of those. Okay. I've never but seen there's anything, a There's a scene so in I'm Crash. There's a scene in, there's a, yeah, there's a scene in <laughs> Crash Landing on You where she kind of does it. So I, I thought that was really funny. Uh, what's your favorite part about living out there? I mean, you're on the other side of the world right now. Oh, the culture, 100%. I mean, for me, being a Korean, um, yeah. you know, I, I had pretty, as a younger kid, we were a pretty traditional Korean family. Mm -hmm. So, and I always wanted to come here. I always wanted to play here. Obviously, I didn't get a chance. You know, I had a couple of injuries. But, um, you know, for me to actually live here and, and speak the language and the food, I mean, I'm eating Korean food every day. It's, it's honestly, it, it's, a, it's a great situation, and, and I love it right now. That's so cool. So this was your first time going out there, was moving out there for the job. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't been here. I haven't been out here since I was like eight years old, wow. seven, eight years old. Yeah. What's your favorite Korean dish? Since you're saying I mean, the I'm Korean gonna be, foods. I'm going to be, I'm going to be biased to anything that my okay. mom cooks you know, usually, okay. but um, no, everything, everything out here is good. I, I think a lot of people back home, I know I've posted a couple of things on like Instagram and yeah. you know, my goal, my, goal was like post stuff that was like nothing related to korean barbecue 
and I wanted to really show. I know, I know, I know. Um, That's the best. I really wanted. I really <laughs> wanted to. I really wanted to show people like the like real Korean like rice dishes and soup dishes. Like okay. Korean people, they you gotta have soup. Like I notice every time you go somewhere, okay. every everything is like always based around kind of some like soup dish. All right. Yeah. That sounds delicious. Yeah, it's good. I mean, I yeah. can't. I can't complain. No. It's weird, you know, getting coming to the field and then our pregame spread is like Korean food, and I'm just, you know, it's some days I'm just like, oh, this is awesome. Like yeah. this is it, kind of yeah, it's surreal. Oh yeah. Now before we let you go, I want to reflect on a couple memories here because you are still one of my favorite baseball memories. Also, oh, could be the funniest. Yeah, sure. I don't, I don't know were... if that's a bad, <laughs> yeah. a bad thing. <laughs> button down the third base line you take off running to first base you trip you do a roll you get up and you still made it to first base oh unbelievable dying laughing when that happened but just also mm -hmm. so impressed do you ever live that down <laughs> do people still bring that up to you <laughs> oh that's all that's all they were talking about when i got here so a lot yes. of the korean ball players you know they <laughs> They have the, you know, they saw us coming, so they're like, "Oh, I'm gonna look up YouTube." So what's like the first thing that pops up on YouTube is obviously like the bunt, you know? Yes. And uh, they just they just start rolling and laughing, and that's a, I mean, that's a fun one. I mean, yeah, it's, you know, you're obviously embarrassed during the time that it happens, but you know, you look like I look back at all my memories right now with Angels and yeah. you know, with with any of my teams, and it's just it's just fun. It's just fun it's if you so can't good. like laugh at yourself. Especially in baseball. If you, yeah. you don't have, like, thick skin or you can't laugh at yourself, it's going to be a long season. I know. So, um, you know, it, that, was, that was good stuff. But that's what you did. You brought that kind of light energy and fun to the clubhouse and to the dugout. And it's so important to have that, like you said, on a team to keep it light, keep it fun. You're playing a game. Oh, yeah. If you're having fun, yeah. then everybody's having fun. Exactly. I mean, then that's, that's the thing is, like, as ballplayers, we all care. Like, nobody, yeah. just because, you know, you, you laugh. You, some people, like, they see the laughing or they see people, like, having fun on the field or that, and they automatically assume, like, oh, he's not, he doesn't care or he's just doing whatever. And it's like, no, like, obviously we care about winning the game and we're yeah. so locked in. But at some point over the course of the season, it's like, it's good to get guys to just loosen up a little bit. If you're just tense and tight all the time, you're going to just – drive yourself nuts over the course of the season. Oh yeah. Is that kind of the model you're bringing to your team now? A little bit. I mean, for me, it's like, as far as coming here, I, I have to adapt a little bit to the culture. Mm -hmm. And um, so there's, there, there's different things here and there that I've gotten used to. And there's things that our new manager and our new general manager that um, I've taken over the team. They've done a good job as far as kind of giving some guys some freedom a little bit. So it's okay. uh it's been good. Yeah. The culture difference is, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely different, you know, as a coach too, when I see all the players and they like, they bow to say hi all the time, yeah. not bowing. So respectful. which by the way, yeah, it's very respectful. It's very respectful, which by the way, I think back in the States, they just need to start adapting that somehow instead of well, shaking. Now that, hands. now that we can't shake hands. Well, the Angels, once saying. they got, once they got Otani, um, I think everyone kind of picked up that, that, cultural movement too everyone just kind of bows all the reporters to all the Japanese media and to Otani and everybody so the angels have slowly picked that up yeah yeah um, Otani he's a beast Ugh. oh yeah yeah but yeah you look at it I mean nobody nobody really shakes hands it's all just like just all respectful bows and everything and just always saying hi so I love that. Well, thank you so much. I got. I know you're like about to run out for a game right now, and you got to get ready. You're about to hit the road. Yeah, too. pack. Yeah, we're gonna take the bus after too. So we're. Uh, it's a busy day today. I, I know. It's I can see fun. you're hanging closet on the right side. I got your suitcase on the left. You're living on the yeah. go. I know. I know. This is. Uh, this is the lifestyle out here. It's. Uh, I, love I can't it. beat it though. It's awesome. Oh, well, thank you so much for your time and sharing that insight. And I love technology. Oh, this is like when it's so cool is you're in South Korea and I'm in Los Angeles and here we go. I know. I, there was like I'm two not hiccups. good with technology. So, but this was like super easy. Just get, the, get the pods in, easy. set up Zoom and we're good to go. Click the link. Here we go. Yeah. So it's good seeing you again. Yeah, you it's too. Been a while, so. it's been I know we always catch up on Instagram. <laughs> so it's good. So uh, yeah, this is awesome. Wow. Well, thanks. Hey, good luck tonight, today. 
it's yeah. daytime for you, evening for us, which is so crazy. Oh, yeah. 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 16 hours ahead. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. I so appreciate it. Yeah. No you problem. were wonderful. High five from afar. <laughs> or no, bow. We bow. Uh, we bow now. Oh, yeah. Bow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Take care. All right. See you, Hank.